I have built, used and tested a lot of weapons. And when I see a mastery rank 4 secondary, it's pretty hard to get my hopes up. Thankfully, the new core surprised me. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 4 secondary weapon, the new core. I'm gonna be covering a cheap build, something accessible that anybody can build, but of course we also have the classic end game setup with a Riven. Actually, we have two Rivens this time. Please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually follow a more new player friendly approach, simply because there's a ton of information here and I want anybody watching this to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. But you may be a veteran of this game and already know all of this stuff. If that is the case then you're invited to skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the new core. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and for that I'm gonna need a couple of guinea pigs. First things first, the Nucor is a beam weapon and it has 25 meters worth of range. Now the beam kinda looks like a sonic boom of sorts, the wiki describes this one as being a microwave gun. Once again 25 meters worth of range and being a beam weapon that means that you do not get 100% of its damage as soon as you pull the trigger. You get 20% which quickly ramps up to 100% over the course of 0.6 seconds. After firing stops it will remain at 100% for 0.8 seconds after which it will decay back to the original 20% over the course of two seconds so keep that one in mind now we have a very special effect on the new core you will see that this guy has a swollen head that is once again the effect of the new core the target will be taking double damage from the new core and 50 percent additional damage from all other sources so that's pretty good also you're gonna notice that only one body part is swollen however the entire thing takes extra damage so if you're aiming for head and just the head gets all big and all whatnot that doesn't mean you're not gonna get the bonus damage if you shoot them well somewhere else and that's pretty much it let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with first of all as always we're gonna be talking about mod capacity 60 out of 60 and if your new core only has 30 out of 30 then jump into actions and install an auto king catalyst the auto king catalyst can be found from alerts invasions or if you're lucky from the daily sortie as an alternative measure you can pay 20 plat to have one plugged in Next, my new core has been format a total of 7 times, but this was done for the purpose of testing. For the weapon builds, I'm recommending you guys, 4 forma will do it. Accuracy is 100, once again this is a beam weapon and you can add something like, let's see... Magnum Force, if you want to use this one, though I don't really recommend it. The accuracy loss isn't really gonna be that big of a deal, once again it is a beam weapon. The problem with Magnum Force is that fully maxed out it gives you 66% extra damage at the cost of 33% accuracy. It simply doesn't give enough damage, this is currently a very underpowered mod. Critical chance is 3%, yes, it's an abysmal critical chance, but the critical multiplier is 4.0, this is the highest crit multi of all weapons in Warframe. And we can make use out of it, and we'll talk about that a tad later. Fire rate is 10 with a magazine of 50 and a reload of 2.0. I would have appreciated if the reload was just a tad lower, but as it is now, you're not gonna get a lot of downtime out of the new core. However, one of the weapon's weaknesses is the fact that it's not very ammo efficient, so you might have to go into carrier with ammo case. So let's get that one out of the way. Once again, you can go into carrier or carrier prime, it doesn't really matter which of the two because you will get access to ammo case. This is a default mod, you don't really have to spend a lot of endo to rank it up. Just make sure the new core is the weapon that is equipped. Now, with that out of the way, Riven Disposition 5 out of 5. Apparently, the new core is not a very popular weapon, though once upon a time, it was the weapon to have. Status chance 29% and this is where the weapon shines. It deals by default radiation damage. We have an elemental combo. That means if I was to try to increase the radiation on the weapon, let's say with some more electricity, it will not get combined into the default uh, damage of the weapon. If I really want to make more electricity then I'm gonna have to remake the elemental combo within the weapon with electricity and heat. And now of course the two get combined so keep that one in mind. Treat this radiation as a very last mod somewhere around here. As you may know your elemental combos on any weapon are always two by two and the priority is from top left to bottom right. 
Let's start slapping on some mods, and of course, we're gonna start with the mandatory mods. Hornet Strike, 100% mandatory, 220% extra damage. Next, we're gonna go into multi-shot. We're gonna be slapping on Battle Diffusion with 120% multi-shot and Lethal Torrent with 60% fire rate and 60% multi-shot. The Nucor will make use out of that fire rate as well as the multi-shot. The fire rate will mean that our kill time will go down significantly, but it also means more ammo issues. However, Carrier with ammo case fully fixes that, so no worries about that. Now what does multi-shot do on beam weapons anyway? As you saw here, my status chance did not budge, even though I did add a whole bunch of multi-shot. Normally when you're dealing with projectile based weapons or bullet weapons for example, adding multi-shot will also increase your shot status chance, not in the case of beam weapons. What multi-shot does on beam weapons is simply increase your damage, but it's based off the modded uh, weapon damage value instead of the default weapon damage value. It's a tad kooky, but that's simply how it works. Next, this is when you would go into crit chance and crit damage. Unfortunately for us, the base crit chance is 3%. Even if I was to add a fully stacked prime pistol gambit, I would get 8.6. Absolutely bloody terrible. It's simply not worth it. Now, we can get the critical chance to a decent or great value, but we're gonna have to use... Uh, something other than mods. We're gonna talk once again about that a tad later. We're gonna go into elemental damage and elemental damage should always be applied depending on your circumstances. For example, if you're up against the infested, then I recommend building heat. AoE weapons with heat usually do fantastically well against the infested. There's a lot of them, but they're fairly weak for the most part. If you're going up against corpus faction, they have big shields and against shields you can build magnetic damage or a smarter idea would be to build gas or toxin, which can bypass their shields entirely and deal damage to their health. The Grenier are currently recognized as being the toughest targets in Warframe and they have two armor types. They have ferrite armor which is weak to corrosive damage and they have alloy armor which is weak to radiation damage. Against Grenier more often than not your safest bet is to build corrosive and we're in luck with the Nucor because it already has base radiation. So we're just gonna make a whole bunch of corrosive and we're gonna add the 90 mods and the 6060 mods so you don't need to worry about which is better. If there was a better than yes the 6060 mods would definitely win out but again I recommend you using both or if you need an elemental combo that is different once again use both. Only Jolt is expensive from all of the 6060 mods. That is because this one is only brought by Battle Kit here. It's the only way you can get it. Currently on the trade chat for PC, this one goes for about 80 to 100 plat. So when Battle brings it, you can pick up multiple copies and sell them later on for a bit of a profit. Next, we're gonna go into Toxin since I already got my electricity. Pistol Pestilence 1015 plat on the trade chat. Farmable from Corrupted Vore in the Void. This one is easy to get and not expensive. And of course, Pathogen Rounds. Now I got a whole bunch of corrosive on my weapon. I used four mods to increase my status chance to 63.8% and also make about 600 corrosive. Now that is definitely significant. You have one more mod slot left on the weapon and this is what I like to call the option slot. Plug into this one whatever you guys feel comfortable with. For example, a lot of players enjoy punch through, like Seeker. The beam will be going through the initial target and keep traveling for 2.1 meters. And in Warframe you're gonna make plenty use out of punch through so I highly recommend Seeker. Here's another idea, why don't we increase the range of the beam itself? We only have 25 meters by default and we can increase the range. The mod is called Ruinous Extension, 8 range. That means we're gonna get a total range of 33. Now these are all valid options, go for whatever you feel comfortable with. What I'm gonna be recommending is a bit more damage because you can never really go wrong with damage. Augur Pact, this is a mod that I almost never managed to fit on my weapons because there's always a better option. Not in this case, 90% extra damage plus the benefit of the set. We're gonna ignore the benefit of the set, 90% extra damage will mean that I get 756 corrosive with 252 radiation. Now this weapon is ready to take on some Grenier. This is the build I'm recommending for you guys. For this one, you only need four Forma, so let's test it and see if it got any kick to it. Carrier does not have a weapon, so don't worry about him. As you can see, an MR4 weapon is able to tear through one of these high-level targets like there's no tomorrow. It only takes about 30 shots. Keep in mind that this being a beam weapon, per ammo, you're gonna get two damage ticks. The problem I have with the new core is that whole beam thing it's it really makes it hard to aim and the whole swollen enemies thing doesn't make it easier either so keep that one in mind 
but to be honest for an MR4 weapon this is absolutely bloody fantastic it's very strong honestly I, I, I was expecting this to be a meme weapon but it's so not the case I highly recommend the Nucor if it can do this at MR4 then this is one solid option for a entry level secondary weapon something like that so once again it takes about 20 to 30 ammo to take out one of these high level targets absolutely bloody glorious unfortunately the build we're currently using does not make use of the highest critical multiplier in game well default critical multiplier in game how can we make use out of that high crit multi we need outside buffs and i'm not talking about other players buffing us we can use harrow for example with his four ability to get guaranteed orange crits we're gonna get 50 percent or 200 percent for headshots these are bonus additive after but perhaps you don't like to play Harrow, then you can use an Adurza Kavat to get your crit chance, that'll give you 60% additive after, and you can also use an Arcane called Arcane Avenger. That one will give you 30% once again additive after. I say this additive after time and again because it doesn't apply to the base crit chance, it simply gives you 30 or 60 once again depending on the buff. But until then we're gonna move to a Riven setup. Now I have two Rivens to show to you guys, this is a more of an all purpose Riven. I rolled it 10 times and I got damage to infested toxin and multi shot. Now the toxin and multi shot are pretty good. The damage to infested, unfortunately, I honestly don't care about it. When we got a negative weapon recoil, which doesn't really affect the weapon. And I replaced the auger pact with the ribbon. And we're gonna test the weapon out like this. Once again, this is a Dispo 5 weapon, so the Rivens will be pretty potent. You can get to crazy amounts of multi shot stuff like 250%. Absolutely bloody hilarious. And as you will see, of course, a Riven does make a difference. Uh, we can take out one of the high level targets in about 20 ammo, something like that. Yes, 20 to 25 ammo, so it did get a huge DPS increase. And as you can see, the Nucor can be one outstanding weapon. Once again, I highly recommend it. It would be hard not to recommend an MR4 weapon that can do this. Absolutely bloody hilarious. Now that is one Riven I wanted to showcase to you guys and I do have another one. The second Riven I have is catered to Lord Harrow. First things first, get rid of the old Riven and we're also gonna get rid of one of the 90 mods. The second Riven I have is a Acre Kata. Now this one will give me 286% extra damage and 133% crit damage. Once again we will make use out of crit damage this time since we're going into Warframe buffs and I'm not gonna leave the crit multi only at 9.3 of course We're gonna take it further with prime target cracker, which will give me another hundred this one fully stacked out would give you a hundred and ten It's not that big of a difference 13.3 crit multi absolutely bloody hilarious now this Riven let me have a minute here I was looking for an unrolled new core Riven for 40 plat. I found a guy, I said, hey, I'll pay 40 for this. He said, okay, and then he was like, oh my god, it's you. And he gave it to me for free. Then a clan mate rolled it 15 times. Hey, guys. Thank you. And now on with the test. Of course, this is going to be with full Warframe buffs and we're going to have a look at Harrow really quick. We're going to be using Pistol Amp, 27% extra damage to pistols. This is an aura, so everybody in your party will be receiving this benefit and it is stackable times four. As for Arcanes, these are a lot more impactful. The best option you have is Arcane Precision. On headshot, 80% chance for plus 120% damage to pistols for 8 seconds. And of course, the usual plus 1 Arcane Revive. This one is farmable from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. I think on the trade chat on PC, it goes for about 100-120 plat. And the second one, of course, is gonna be Arcane Avenger. This one I mentioned a tad earlier. On damaged, 14% chance for 30% crit chance for 8 seconds. Once again, bonus additive after. So with the Arcane Avenger buff, I'm gonna go to 33% crit chance, but we're also gonna be using Harrow's 4 ability to pump up our crit chance even further. Kill off the remnants, unpause the AI, and re-simulate. This time, they're gonna have to hit me. I think they're gonna kill my poor carrier, but there you go. Activate Harrow's 4th ability so I can mitigate some damage and get my crit on and of course his second ability as well. Now in the case of the Nucor the second ability isn't that big of a deal. What Harrow's second ability does is give you increased uh, reload speed and fire rate so we're gonna be able to take out these high level targets even faster. And as soon as I get my crit buff, you will see that this weapon is absolutely bloody hilarious. It takes about 1-2 to two seconds to take out one of these high level targets. Absolutely 
bloody glorious. This is truly brilliant. I cannot believe that an MR4 weapon is capable of doing something like this. Of course, we are running some extreme Warframe buffs and we're using our knowledge to get the most out of a weapon. Once again, this thing has a crit multi of 4.0 by default. No weapon has that. And as you can see, this is absolutely bloody outstanding. It only takes a couple of shots to absolutely annihilate one of these high level targets. So you can use a uh, synergy such as this with Hatter. Once again, keep in mind, Adarza Kavat, Arcane Avenger, these are your go-to when it comes to high crit chance for this weapon because once again, these are bonuses, additive, after effects. And that's gonna conclude the new core review. This is a freaking outstanding weapon. I highly recommend it if you're MR4 or MR20. It doesn't really matter. It's a fun weapon. However, it does have some drawbacks. First of all, the ammo uh, efficiency. That can be fixed. But the biggest issue I have with the weapon is aiming it. It kind of gets a little bit fuzzy and the debuff sometimes does more harm than good in the sense that the targets become all blurry and it's even harder to hit precise points. As always, my name is Ben Laisar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. I can't realistically promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week, but I will be reading through each and every comment. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.